This morning I was working in a cave <laughs> and this afternoon I'm at about more or less 2,000 feet ish give or take a few feet 100 feet or so um, so I'm on uh, Robinson uh, which I try and spend my time with the back to the wind um, so I'm on Robinson um, summits just behind me and you can hear and see the weather is terrible uh, it's, it's blowing a hoolie and uh, it's raining so yay <laughs> But I'll show you the view. So, Buttermere. So this is a Buttermere Valley, um, and if the weather was decent, it'd be spectacular. So over here, uh, got Great Gable and Scarfell Pike, and then Pillar and High Style, and then obviously the Buttermere Valley with Crummock Water and uh, Buttermere and Brothers Water, and then Grassmoor, and then behind me. Um, uh, Robinson and then Dalehead so if the weather was great or fine I'll try and stop the rain falling on the camera um, it would be pretty special but the weather's not fine in fact the weather's pretty terrible <laughs> um, there have been the occasional glimpses of sun but very very occasional I uh, sorry I hope you can hear me over that uh, that wind I, I've I've photographed down in the valley before uh, and I photographed over the other side of Great Gable at Sprinkling Tarn and uh, one of my previous films from the lakes when I was up on um, Causey Pike I pointed out Robinson which is here so I'm in I, you know this is kind of the heart of rugged Lake District territory and the Buttermere Valley is very very much kind of photographed because you know you get the combination of the lakes and the mountains um, but at the moment, I'm just getting a combination of wind and rain. <laughs> so I'm going to stick it out a bit uh, and hope that uh, some of this cloud blows over. It wasn't raining when I set off. I should say, this is probably one of the easiest um, uh, fells, Wainwrights, to, to, uh, to get to the top of because you can essentially drive up to a car park space, which is about two thirds of the way up. So it only takes about 20 minutes from the, uh, from the car park. Uh, unless you come kind of the, the hard way, but I don't really believe in doing things, making things harder than they necessarily have to be. So you can imagine the compositions I could get around here. But at the moment, I'm just going to try and stay dry and find somewhere out the wind. But I quite like, uh, uh, the, there's a nice view that way if some of the cloud shifts. But we'll see. I don't think you'll see me sat down very often taking uh, landscape photographs, um, but this is about the best place I could find uh, out of the worst of the wind. Um, so I'm looking across Buttermere, and believe it or not, the weather's got a lot better than it was a few minutes ago. <laughs> um, it was pretty poor. So blow, blowing a gale and uh, not heavy rain, but that kind of, um, I don't know what you'd call it, you know, kind of fine rain that just blows up and so rather than kind of dr coming down and drenching you, it just blows and circles around and goes up your coat and everything, so not pleasant. <laughs> but, is it getting a bit lighter? <laughs> I've checked the weather forecast twice. Um, so, sorry, I should just say, so um, the peak of Robinson is just up there, so I've come if before I was at 12 o'clock, I've come to about three o'clock on Robinson, if that makes sense. Um, I've checked the weather forecast and one weather forecast says the next hour will be sunshiny showers and the other forecast says the next hour will be torrential rain. I'm hoping the first one is right. Um, but there is a little bit of brightness, a tiny, tiny little bit of brightness. Oh, so um, if you can pick out just in the distance, that mountain in the distance with the kind of bobbles on the end that's Causey Pike so one of my previous films I was up there looking this way so 
I'm looking back towards Causey Pike just so you've got the, the position. Um, so there's occasional little little bits of light shining on um, Grassmore and what I'm hoping is some of those head down into the lake, into the valley. So I'm just going to sit here, but I'll, I'll show you. I quite like the composition. Um, <laughs> you can't see anything there at the moment. Um, so apologies, because that's going to concentrate on the, the landscape rather than the clouds. So I've got a, a composition with the lake starting on my rule of thirds. I'm, I'm moving across the image. And then just on this rule of thirds there uh, is the other lake in the distance. So there's, there's hopefully a nice balance of the composition, a kind of a, 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 almost a, an, an L that's fallen on its back. That makes, that makes sense. Um, so I quite like that composition. And the road so there's a little bit of interest there as well <clears throat> but what i need is some light um at the, at the moment um i seem to be specializing don't i in kind of moody black and white images well <laughs> this is certainly moody uh i'm going to take an image just for the hell of it but i'm going to um keep my fingers crossed that we get why don't I keep my fingers crossed <laughs> and um Hopefully we get a bit of, uh, of light in the valley. And if I could make a wish, a bit of rain, a bit of light and a rainbow. <laughs> the wind's picked up again. Um, but I've just dropped in a filter because uh, the sky has brightened a little bit. And um, when I was putting in the filter, I thought, actually, it's an opportunity for me to talk to you about maths. Exciting, hey? <laughs> um, but the reason is, uh, kind of, how do you choose the filter? So and you, you, you'll, you'll probably know that filters come in one stop, two stop, three stop, so on and so forth, up to you get the specialist filters at kind of 15 stops with big stoppers. But how do you choose whether you use a, a one stop, a two stop or, or, or whatever? Uh, and there's quite an easy way of, of, of um, thinking about it. So in this scene, for example, you've got bright clouds, dark landscape. So we'll use simple maths. Uh, so take a reading off the clouds and take a reading off the landscape. So if, for example, the camera is suggesting that the correct exposure for the clouds was one um, fortieth of a second, and for the landscape it was um, one hundred and sixtieth of a second, because it, a whole stop doubles the, um, uh, the shutter speed, so from 40, one stop up would be 80, another stop up, double 80, is 160. So between 40 and 160, there's two full stops. So you would look at, I'll put in a two stop filter. However, if you put in a two stop filter, you then get a, uh, an exposure that potentially quite bland, because you still want some, you don't, you don't want the clouds to look exactly the same as the land. You don't want the clouds to look the same. You know, there is a difference between the clouds and the land, and you want to retain that difference. You don't want them to look exactly the same. You just end up with a really dull image. So actually, what I would do is put in a one-stop filter so it just takes some of the brightness out of the clouds, but not all of the brightness. Hopefully, that makes sense. It's always worth bearing in mind that a full stop um, will double the speed. Uh, so you know you, you go from 20 to 40 to 80 to, so you're going up in doubling so always useful to to just do that bit of take a reading take a reading what's the camera suggesting the difference but then don't go for the full effect just come back a little bit so at the moment uh, i've got a two stop filtering because the camera was suggesting um the difference between uh, the oh, hold on to my camera. The difference between the cloud and the land was three stops. Um, so I want to take some of the brightness out of the clouds, but not all of it. Hopefully that makes sense. Did that make sense? Did the maths make sense? Hope it did. Um, and I'm still waiting for some brightness. Might be a long wait. I knocked that on the head. Um, an hour and a half, two hours was probably long enough to be sat there waiting for something to happen. And you can see. The weather forecast about rain was probably right, so it's gone a lot. The cloud level has dropped, the rain started to come, so I'm just heading down. 
so I've come down that way. It's quite steep, quite quite fun, steep climb and, and steep descent. And my car is down there. So I said Robinson was pretty easy to get to the summit of. From the car up here, it's you know quite steep. But once you've done that, it's it's literally kind of 10 or 15 minutes up here, and then it's because Robinson's got quite a rounded top. It's a fairly straightforward stroll up. So uh, heading, heading down to the car. There's a lot of rain about. Um, so that'll probably be it for another uh, film. Um, I'm thinking of going back via uh, the Buttermere Valley. So there's a chance I might see something on my way. Sorry about all the rain. But uh, if not, I'll say goodbye now. Um, look forward to your comments and thumbs up and all that sort of stuff. Really appreciate it. Uh, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you learnt something. I hope my maths lesson wasn't too boring. And uh, I'm going to put my hood up and uh, head into the wind and the rain. The wind's blowing this way. So see you soon. Bye.